Uh, my name is Daryl. I'm a, I'm a writer, freelance journalist, and uh, I sometimes do travel writing. This is loosely based on a trip to Namibia. The lioness was on her belly, content and winking. They saw flashes of her pink tongue as she munched leaves off a branch. Next to her lazed an adolescent cub. The tour group some 30 feet away sat breathless. It was their first cat sighting. The pair of lions nodded, and nothing in particular. Their watchers, meanwhile, held their breath, exhaling it to make little sounds of appreciation, or to put a hushed question to Hazel, the safari guide. Murmur, murmur. They liked the salt on the leaves, Hazel explained from the driver's seat. The clicks of their cameras, click, click, joined the sounds of buzzing dragonflies and of shrieking far-off birds. The lioness curled her paws back, bending her head around the slim branch. Jaws that snapped necks. Beneath her coat, rope layers of invisible muscle. Morning sun shone on Atosha Park. Oshiwambu, for great white expanse, Hazel had explained on the pre-dawn ride in from camp. Hundreds of kilometers of salt flats, cracked and tiled like crocodile skin. Beyond that, spiny grassland, which is where the lioness was sitting and basking now with an easy view from the road. There were five of them in the jeep. Two of them were standing with the upper halves of their bodies poking through the sunroof. Max, part of the group of American travel professionals who hadn't known each other until the trip. And Valerie, a South African of about Max's age who did PR for the lodge. They'd become fast friends. The day before, while the rest of the group had been letting the landscape wash over them, Max and Valerie had been eagerly scanning for birds, referring to the guides Hazel had given them, and checking the ones they could identify. Plovers, thrushes, flycatchers, warblers, off their list. Each sighting nudged them into each other, justified a compliment or an arm touch, and made Max increasingly desperate to tick Valerie off his list. She was impossibly drama, or at least a brewing action sequence. Watching the lioness, they felt a similar sense of doubt <clears throat> and expectancy. She was up on her legs now, activated. What would she do? The zebras seen now as potential victims seemed more interesting, part of a drama, or at least a brewing action sequence. Once a zebra was dead, did its crazy stripes lose their luster? The lioness made a long, slow scan that had little urgency to it. She's looking for a baby, or one with a limp, Hazel explained. And then, for some unknown reason, a switch flipped in the lioness. She crouched on her forepaws, brought her head low. The same twitching focus with which a house, co house cat stalks a mouse. The watchers, too, stiffened. Each shift the lioness made set off new camera clicks. They heard a low growl. What was that? Hazel's stomach. Oh. The lioness's cub, alert but unsure, watched what she watched. They waited like this for a minute or so. Then something slackened. The lioness's weight shifted backward. The zebras, their heads still bobbing, crossed what might have been some invisible barrier. Max whipped Valerie and shrugged. The lioness sat down again, back to lazing. Disappointed they hadn't seen the predator spring, sprint, attack, drag its wide-eyed prey down by the neck, they asked Hazel if their presence there, watching, had been a deterrent. No, Hazel said. They're quite used to humans by now. Bit of a shame she changed her mind, Valerie said. When Hazel turned on the ignition, it was like a collective clear of the throat. The lioness and her cub ignored it.